Hey everybody, Jazzy here with another Don't Star Together dedicated server guide. At long last, I'm ready to give you the guide for setting up a server with additional shards. That is, more than two connected worlds. The traditional setup comes with the master and the caves, but because each shard is considered its own server, you can in fact add additional shards and link them all together, provided your computer has the resources to handle it. Much of this information can be referenced on Ipsquiggle's forum post explaining how to set up shards and migration portals, but there are a few important steps which I will fill in here. I am aware that there is a shard configuration mod that automatically generates worlds with the correct number of portals linked up neatly, but in my experience, it does not reliably turn off automatic linking, especially, you know, if there's leftover portals in a shard. So for today's purposes, I'm going to show you how to do this with no mods installed, and it will show you the actual process of linking a bit more clearly. But if you want to mess with the mod after getting more comfortable with the process, then go for it. It definitely saves some time. So in the first part of this guide, I'm going to show you how to set up all the server files to generate and start up three separate servers. In the second part, I will walk you through how to manage your portal disable automatic linking, and finally, manually link all of your portals to each other. I'll also share a pastebin link containing all the console commands that I'll be using in this guide. So, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set up some basic server files, and we're going to do it the same way we created our original dedicated server files. We go to accounts.clay.com, you sign on to your account, and then you go to games. Underneath games, you'll see Don't Starve Together, just click on game servers, we're going to scroll all the way down, we're going to add a new server, and we're going to call it Multi Shard Test, right? And then just click Add New Server. Then we're going to search for that in here amidst the generic Lua console generated. Here we go. Multi Shard Test. Click on Configure Server. Now, we're going to change the cluster name to Multi Shard Test World. We're going to change the cluster description to whatever, just a test. And the password, uh, well, I've been using the password shardy. There you go. And we're going to click download settings. That's going to download a zip file with all of these configuration files. That zip file will contain a folder called my daddy server. And what you can do is just drag that folder directly into the folder containing your server startup batch file. And mine is located in the data folder of Don't Starve Together. There it is, right there. And now I have placed the My Daddy Server folder into this folder. Okay, now we need to modify a couple of server files. The cluster.ini and the cluster token get automatically generated from the accounts page, which is pretty nice. If you go into the master folder, open server.ini. And underneath this shard category, we're gonna add two more fields. The first is gonna be name. You can call this whatever you want. I typically call it either master or forest. Uh, the console does reference this name, so sometimes it makes it easier to understand where you're uh, migrating to and from when you're looking at the console. But the important field to add here is the ID. And this is the, it's a text string. And the code is going to use this ID when linking worlds. So make sure it's something really simple. I typically just number my shards. So starting with the master shard, I'm going to call that one, just one. And then the cave shard will be two, and then any additional shards will be three, four, five, and so on. But that's all you got to add. Just hit save, and you can close this. Now we're going to do the same for the caves folder. Open up server.ini. We're going to add the ID. The name is already added. Yeah, we're just going to make this ID two. So the master is one, and the caves are two now. Save and close. Okay, now we're going to make a folder for a third shard. And to do that, we're going to create a folder. We're going to call it, I mean, I typically make a third shard for a loot world, just a world that I can go in and grab a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to call it loot. Now, in order for the batch file to recognize this folder as its own server, it needs to contain a server.ini file. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this one in the caves system and we're going to copy it over to the loot world. And then we're going to change a couple things in it. So first, we got to change the name to loot. We got to change the ID to three. Now, the server port, the master server port, and the authentication port always need to have different numbers. So if you look at the numbers between the caves and the main server INIs, you'll notice that the numbers incremented up one. So we're just going to do the same here. We're going to add one to each of these numbers just to ensure 
that none of these ports are being used more than once. That's it. So your finished server.ini should look like this. Go ahead, save and close. The last file that you probably want to add in here is a worldgen override.lua. And I'm actually going to add one for each of the shards. Do yourself a favor and put this setting in your world gen override options just to make sure that you don't get badgered by bats while you're setting up your portals. You can always just delete the line after you're done setting everything up, but this will just ensure that you're not getting constantly badgered. So this is the overworld, and I'm going to copy this one over to the loot world, but I'm going to add a couple more custom uh, world gen settings. Let's see. If you're looking for a more comprehensive guide to customizing your world, I do have a guide out for that. Okay, now it's time to edit our startup file. So if you go to startdstservers.bat and you go to edit, we're going to just copy one of these null renderer lines, and we're going to paste it down here. We're going to change the name of the shard to loot. That's all you have to do. The, uh, the, the null renderer will recognize the folder called loot, and it'll look for a server.ini file inside, and we'll set up the server uh, with those instructions. So yeah, just hit save and close. And at this point, you should be ready to fire up your server. So go ahead and double click start DST servers bat and let's see what we get. All right, you should get three windows popped up. One window for each server that you're trying to start up simultaneously. But it looks like all the worlds started. Now, I like to arrange these based on order. So I want to put my master at the top. One easy way you can look for it is... If you check out these portal validations, you'll see this server validated, tried to validate portals with uh, shard 3 and shard 2. That's the number outside of the bracket. So I know that this is world 1. Uh, this tried to link with shard 1 and shard 2, so I know that this is world 3. And this one link tried to link with shard 1 and shard 3, so this is world 2. Just makes it easier to uh, know where to look for information once you start running commands in-game. But yeah. All that we have to do at this point is set up the portal configurations. Now at this point, I would strongly recommend you make a guide for yourself on how you want to set up the portals. Each shard will generate with 10 portals, either cave entrances or cave exits. These portals will have IDs 1 through 10. And while we're linking up shards, we're going to make sure that each portal links to another portal in another shard with the same ID. This will make it infinitely easier to troubleshoot portals later on if things get messed up. And it is in line with how the game engine automatically links portals. For this server, I'm going to have both connected to the master shard, with five portals connected to the caves and five portals connected to the loot world. I will reserve portals 1 through 5 for the caves and portals 6 through 10 for the loot world, which means we're going to keep just those numbered portals in each secondary shard. But first thing we got to do is navigate into the game. If you go to uh, your connection filters, go to LAN, you should see the multi-shard test world. And if we take a look at the view world, for some reason it shows the, the loot world settings in the second tab, but we should see settings change back Bat set to none. How about uh, berry bushes? Yep. Beehives? Yep. Okay. Everything looks good. Did bats get set to none in the main branch? It did. Okay. Let's hop on in. Okay. The first thing we're going to want to do is delete all portals that we don't want to use. So in the main world, we're going to have five and five, right? five pointing to each shard. So we're going to keep all 10 portals on the main world. In the cave system, we're just going to need five, right? The five that connect back to the main world. So what we're going to do is migrate to the second shard. And you do that just with C migrate to. And there you go. Okay, now here's the process we're going to do. We're going to hop around to each of these cave exits and we're going to delete all of the cave exits with an ID of six through 10, right? Because just one through five are gonna be used to link back to the main world. So to do that, we're gonna paste a little command and this is going to, oh, we gotta change, we gotta change this prefab to cave exit. That is the prefab for the stairways in the cave. What this is gonna do, it's gonna send information to the console over on the left. So, so take a look at that second window when I do this, right? Just send me a bunch of information over here. And I'm going to enlarge this so you can really see what's going on here. This world migrator info, that's what we want. ID 1, world 1, auto. What this means is the cave exits 
is ID. It's cave exit number one. It links back to world one and auto linking is currently on. By the end of this, all of these portals should be set to manual, not auto. So we're going to keep this cave exit and we can just hop over to the next one by doing C go next cave exit. And now we're going to run the same command. If you pull up the console and you use the up arrow, you actually scroll through previous commands that you've run, which is really convenient for this process where you're going to be repeating a lot of commands over and over again. So we're going to do this again. It's going to locate the nearest cave exit and give us the uh, information. So it looks like this is ID number five. We're going to keep this one too. So we're just going to go straight to the next cave exit, run that debug string. ID number seven, we're going to delete this one because we're not using it. So I'm going to use too many items. I'm going to hit this delete button right there. Done. Moving on to the next one. This is number two. We're keeping it. This is number eight. We're going to delete it. This is number three. We're keeping it. This is number four. We're keeping it. This is ten. Getting deleted. This is six. Deleted. Deleted. Did we get all of them? So here, here's how you check to see if you've deleted enough cave entrances. You do C count prefabs cave exit. And that will tell you in here how many cave exits there are. Looks like there's six, so we missed one. No worries. We're just going to go to the next one, which is probably it. This is, oops, uh, this one. Oh, number nine. There we go. So now if we run the count prefabs again, there are five cave exits in the world. Perfect. Now for worlds that only are going to link to one other world, there's a way to very quickly link all the portals in the world to that world at the same time. And it's a little loop command for KV and pairs. And we just got to change the prefab to cave exit. Escape. And we're going to set the destination world to one. That's correct. This true line is very important because it turns off manual linking. So it just ensures that the next time you reset the world, it won't try to automatically link portals. It'll just be the linking will be locked into place. But this should link every cave exit in this world back up to shard number one. And this has to be in quotations because it's a string. But yeah, let's give this a shot. And let's take a look at the console. Check that out. Validated all five portals, one through five, connecting it back to the main world. Shard number one. So at this point, we are done with shard number two. Let's head on over to our loot world. This is where the bat setting really comes in handy. Working around portals, cave entrances, at dusk. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the debug string for this cave entrance, which happens to be open. The other cave entrances will still be closed. But what do we got here? Uh, now, this is the loot world, so we're going to be keeping portals 6 through 10, right? And it looks like this is number one. So it's getting deleted. All right, let's head to the next cave entrance. And now we're going to run this debug string command and make sure that it's just cave entrance. So not the open prefab, just cave entrance. And this is ID number nine. So this gets kept. Let's go to the next one. This is two. Getting deleted. This is five. Getting deleted. This is seven, we keep that one. This is three, getting deleted. And you can see, once you get the hang of it, like, you know, jumping around and arrowing up, looking at the IDs and quickly moving on to the next one, it's really not a long process once you get the feel of, okay, that's ID number seven. That is ID number four, let's get rid of that one. Six, I think we got all of them, let's see. Count, prefabs. Cave entrance. 
I know there's one open entrance. There's five cave entrances. Okay, we missed one. Okay, I forgot that I had deleted the open cave entrance, so we're good to go. There's five closed cave entrances and zero open ones. Great. So now we're going to use that command to automatically link all of the remaining portals here up to the main world. So we only have closed cave entrances, so we're going to use the cave entrance prefab. Set the destination world to 1. Manual linking set to true. And that's it. Let's check out what we did. 6 through 10 looks like they have all been successfully linked back to shard number 1. And they're disabled because we haven't opened the caves yet. So we're good to go. Alright, time for the main world. Alright, let's get started. Let's go to our first cave entrance. Now remember, on the main world, portals 1 through 5 are going to go to shard 2. Portals 6 through 10 are going to go to shard 3, right? Alright, let's run the debug command. And we got to change that just to cave entrance because it's still closed. This is ID number 8. So this one's going to go to world 3. Okay, so because we're going to have portals linking to different shards from here, we're going to have to set each one of these portals manually. So there is a command. This one, it locates the nearest cave entrance, just the cave entrance, and it's going to set the destination world, and it's going to turn off automatic linking. So this is portal number eight. That's going to go to world three. There you go. And you can always see confirmation in the console, validate in portal 8. And you, you notice that it automatically links to portal 8 because that ID is available in the third shard. And then just move on to the next one. See, so go next. This is 5. That's going to go to shard 2. This is 7. That's going to go to shard three. This is one. That's going to go to shard two. This one is three. That's going to link to world two. And check it out. Even though this one is already properly configured to go to world two, the fact that it has auto linking on is going to be a problem later on. So you still have to run this command at every portal, even if they're already linked up correctly. All right, this is portal two, so it's going to world two. This is portal nine, so that's going to world three. This is six, that's going to world three. This is four, it's going to world two. This is 10, it's going to world three. This is eight, and I believe we already said it because I can see that this is manual on here. I just want to check to make sure there are no open sinkholes. Sometimes when you migrate, it takes you to a sinkhole and then it opens it up. So that sinkhole gets a different prefab. It's just, yeah, just to make sure. But it looks like there are none. These are all closed sinkholes in the world. And we can confirm that by counting prefabs, cave, entrance. There are 10 cave entrances in the world. So at this point, we have linked up all of the shards, ideally. Let's crack a couple of these sinkholes and see where they take us. All right, so this one should take us to Loot World, portal number eight. Let's see how we go. Yep, looks like we are in the Loot World. Nice. And always pop back through the sinkhole just to make sure that the portals are indeed bi-directional. As far as troubleshooting goes, if you ever go through a portal and pop up at a uh, portal, like the player portal, the first thing I would do is check both the receiving and the sending shard and redo the assignment of portals in both of those worlds just to make sure that auto-linking has been turned off and that all the portals are indeed connecting to the shard that uh, they're intended to. Looks like this one's taken us to the caves. Looks good. Pop back through. So yeah, let's say you wanted to make a three-shard world that connected through the caves. What you could do is delete all but five uh, cave entrances on the main world, connect them to the caves, Keep all 10 exits in the caves and then connect five of them to a third world 
where which would only contain five portals over there. So there are a lot of different ways you can configure these worlds. But the important thing to remember is you gotta turn off auto linking for every single portal in every single world. So if you're not deleting portals in a certain world that aren't getting used, then they have the potential for automatically linking to other shards and possibly causing problems there. So turn on manual linking for every single portal. Yeah, honestly, that's all there is to it. You know, just make yourself a guide and uh, turn on manual linking for all the portals. That's all that really needs to be done. If you run into trouble, I would recommend the clay forums will probably be a better place to troubleshoot. You're going to find more knowledgeable people who are able to help you out with, you know, technical issues. Like if there's a typo in your code somewhere or, you know, where to start looking if uh, your shards are not connecting up correctly. But if you're having issues, I would say look in the comments of my dedicated server videos. A lot of users have posted solutions to their problems and a lot of the issues that come up are very common. But yeah, that's it for the guide. Let me know if uh, you have any questions about any part of this process and I will see you in the next video. Take care.